This session is about uh, migrating your SQL Server databases uh, from a single instance of SQL Server to a target SQL instance. Um, the procedure that I'm going to show now is actually applicable for migrating from the same version of SQL Server to the same version on the target server as well or it is also applicable to the upgrade path as well. When I say upgrade path, you could be upgrading from SQL 2014 to 2016 or 2016 to 2017 or 2017 to 2019. The, the procedure is still the same. Uh, when you do the upgrade, the only difference is SQL Server will actually take care of uh, doing an upgrade in the SQL Server master catalog tables. So as soon as the upgrade is complete, uh, the compatibility level of the database engine is still going to be uh, the same version as what it was in the source. But then it's up to the DBAs or whoever manages the database to change the compatibility level from the current version to the upgraded version. So that's the only difference but uh, apart from it the process the procedure is still going to be the same and there are no further changes with it. Uh, <clears throat> so so if you see here uh, this is uh, this is where I have my source and target servers. I have uh, this the RAM demo DB as my source database server and then I have a target database server called MIG target DB uh, and this MIG target DB is a database server that's been provisioned through ERA. So that's where ERA actually comes into picture uh, during the during the migration itself. So if you see here this database, target database server was provisioned today and uh, in a typical uh, customer environments uh, in typical organizations provisioning of a DB server takes close to uh, at least a week or at least a, a two to three, two to four days. Uh, with ERA, the provisioning of a database server is, is only around 23 minutes. And then if you see the last step here, wherein it registers the database server, this is where you actually create uh, <coughs> a time machine for the database server as well, the, which helps you with your data protection needs. So, so that's how I, um, uh, that's how I actually uh, uh, built my target server using ERA and it also gives me the flexibility of defining the SLAs for for data retention policies. So if you see here, so I have a demo, I have a source database server and I have a target database server. So the next step now is to migrate the databases on the source server to the target server. Now how do I accomplish this? Um, you can accomplish it in different ways. So with the with the backup and restore, you could use plain vanilla SQL management studio to do it. but uh, but if you are talking about large uh, uh, database servers which have uh, more than 10 to 20 databases uh, in it, uh, it's very hard to use Management Studio to, to migrate one database at a time. So you would ideally need to have some kind of uh, scripting uh, automation to be built in to uh, do these uh, migrations. So what I've done is I have actually built a partial script that basically takes backups of the database servers on the source server and then does a restore onto the uh, target uh, database server. So as part of the migration, uh, there are also certain other uh, um, items that you need to take care of, uh, pretty much around the SQL Server logins or database logins. You have the maintenance plans, you have the SQL Server jobs, you have any link server definitions that you also want to be migrated to the target server. So all this is also taken care by the partial script itself. So, so one prerequisite of uh, uh, the doing the migration via the backup and restore uh, scripts are you need to have a shared folder for where the backup uh, backups can reside and that shared folder should also be accessible by the target server so that it can take the backup files from there and do the restore. So what I've done is uh, let me just log in a remote login to the source database server. So one 10.51.141.162 is my source SQL server. So let me just remote log in there. And then, uh, uh, then what I've done is I've actually created a, a target, uh, I've actually created a shared folder on the target server, on the target SQL server, which is my 10.51.141.152. So I've created a folder there called MSSQL target. And if you look at the properties of that uh, folder, this folder should actually be accessible to, uh, to both the accounts that actually run the SQL server services. What I mean is whatever account, domain account that you use for running SQL server here and in the target uh, 
SQL Server should have access to that folder, right? It should be able to write and read into that folder. So that's a prerequisite so that both backups and restore processes can access that folder to put the files and get the files out, right? So that's uh, once you have that prerequisite, I think we are all set to run the backup and the restore. So as I said earlier, what I've done is I've built a uh, partial script that basically what um, it's a very simple script that what it does is it basically takes few parameters as input. Uh, when I say parameters, it, it takes the SQL Server instance name, it takes the backup path, and then it also takes what databases that you want to um, back it up, right? Uh, you can provide multiple backups, uh, multiple database names uh, with, with the comma separation so that it takes backup of all this. So once you have that input, I basically build a script, I basically loop it in and then build a uh, SQL Server equivalent uh, command, backup command to run the backups. Similarly, once everything is done, uh, the, the, the database backup files will actually reside in the, in the uh, uh, shared folder uh, uh, that I've already created on the, uh, on the target server, right? And that's what uh, um, it's going to reside here. Uh, so let's get started uh, with uh, taking the backups. So apart from the backups, you also see there is a there's some more uh, commands here that basically helps me with taking the logins from the source SQL Server as well, right? There is a there is a commandlet called uh, DBA logins that you can install as part of uh, PowerShell itself. So let me just open up my PowerShell window here, uh, and then uh, <coughs> let me just clear this up. And then my, my backup script is actually on the C drive on of the source machine. So it's called backup.ps1. Uh, so I'll probably uh, execute that backup.ps1 and then it is asking for the source server. So let me just uh, copy my source instance name, which is this. Go back to my partial window, uh, paste it here. And then it is asking for the backup path. So I'll, this is the shared path that I was talking about. Uh, I'll take the shared path I'll, and then I'll copy it here and then it is asking me for the database to be backed up. So I'll say I want to just right now back up this one database but if you have more than one DB you just put a comma and then enter the name of the other databases. I'll hit enter uh, and then I'll hit enter and then basically right now it's taking a, uh, it's taking a backup here as you would see the backup is complete. Now you, I go back to the shared folder again and see when the backup was taken. Right, so this is my shared folder. So if you see in the shared folder under this, this, you see that the backup file was just created at 6.05 p.m., which is also the server time here. So I have the backup file and I also have created the login script. So the next step is basically to, uh, to run the restore on the target server. So I go back to my uh, restore server, which is the 1051.141.152 and then <coughs> in here I also have a restore script similar to, to a backup script right so here what I'm going to do is uh, if you see here I basically take certain parameters I take the target instance name the backup path and all the databases that I want to restore and then I build a restore command by looping in using the uh, uh, using the try catch uh, method here right uh, so I basically loop in and restore each database at a time so, so my restore script also is on the C drive of the target server. So if I see, to see here, I have the restore script here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to <coughs> run the restore script from here. And then it is basically asking me for some of the parameters in terms of uh, uh, the, uh, in terms of the target, uh, this one. So I'll just say that's, that's, not, that's, my target server instance name is this. So I'll copy that. And then it's asking for the backup path. So that's my backup path. So, sorry. So I'll copy the backup path here and then it is asking me for the database that I need to restore. So that's going to be around demo db. I'll press enter and then again enter and then now it basically has done the restore part of it uh, and then it was also copied some of the uh, 
logins and all of that. So now, how do I verify that? I'll just do a refresh of my databases here. Wait. And then, if you see here, I have the RAM demo DB on my target server. Now, once I have the databases restored, the next step is to make sure that there is data protection for these databases. How do I ensure that there is data protection? So I go back to error. Right? That's where I would now register my target server. Right? So I say register, I say a single node database, I say Microsoft SQL Server. Mm. <coughs> Which is my this and then I say not registered or I'll say a registered server and then I'll specify my target VM and then it basically starts discovering the databases and then that's how you basically register your uh, your so I have the RAM demo DB here which I just restored onto the server I check this and it basically gives me the uh, database name in error I just say uh, this is just to differentiate I'll just make it as RES I'll say next it's basically discovering the recovery model of the database it's a full recovery model and I'll say I need a brass I need a branch SLA for it I need one snapshot per day 30 minutes log catch-ups and then I basically say register that's that way I am also protecting my uh, databases so I basically have used error to do the provisioning and then I have also used error to register uh, my database uh, on error so that the data protection needs are also enabled so I'll click the register button and then an operation gets submitted so this will take around uh, uh, maybe around the five to seven minutes to register the database uh, so that's all I actually wanted to show today in terms of how you can accomplish an end-to-end -end, uh, backup and restore migration of a SQL Server uh, database uh, from from either uh, databases being on other platforms other than our AHV, right? It could be on uh, physical machines and then you're uh, migrating it onto Nutanix uh, and uh, using ERA to uh, pretty much do most of this stuff in terms of provisioning database protection needs and also in the future you might probably use error to do the patching as well hope uh, hope you enjoyed this session and uh, uh, hope you enjoyed uh, looking at those um, backup and restore scripts as well uh, which is mostly written in partial right thank you